Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this press conference from the fourth day of the 49th annual meeting of the World Economic Forum here in Davos. Thank you for being here in the room. Thank you for joining us on the live stream, whether you're watching on Twitter, Facebook, or the website. We are certainly happy that you're tuning in. This uh, press conference is dedicated to the question how to deal with the electronic waste crisis. Quite dramatic, I admit it, but uh, as you will see, um, it is also uh, quite a challenge that we're facing here. Um, this press conference is also dedicated to uh, the launch of a new report called A New Circular Vision for Electronics, Time for Global Reboot. So uh, more drama from us. Let's see if that's justified. We have a wonderful panel here tonight to speak uh, about this topic and to try to answer the question how to deal with the electronic waste crisis. Um, to my immediate left, we're joined by Franz van Houten, the CEO of Royal Philips. To his left, uh, we're joined by Naoko Ishii, the CEO and chairperson of the Global Environment Facility. To her immediate left, we're joined by Xiao Hu Lin, the Secretary General of the ITU. And last, uh, but definitely not least, uh, we're joined by Leanne Kemp, the founder and CEO of Everledger. Uh, you see, uh, as always, the forum tries to have a, a nice mix of multi-stakeholder uh, uh, experts here together. Um, Franz, you are a co-chair of PACE, which is the platform for accelerating the circular economy. And as everybody has seen, PACE is on the report, so it's uh, basically your report. Um, but um, l let me give you the opportunity to introduce uh, PACE uh, to, to the audience, uh, give a bit of background of what PACE is doing and, and uh, what uh, they will find in the report. With pleasure. Uh, a couple of years ago, here at the World Economic Forum, um, several organizations um, started an initiative around plastics. Uh, we called it Mainstream, uh, and that was a focused effort to get organized around, let's say, closing the loop on plastics. That uh, started to become successful, and then we said we need to do more. Um, WEF is a great convening organization, but as an action platform where many governments and companies all come together, we felt we need an organization, and that is the platform to accelerate the circular economy. Uh, what PACE does is, first of all, it uh, brings everybody together. Um, we share knowledge, but we also organize together around projects. And we do that uh, around themes, um, plastics, uh, electronics, um, uh, responsible food chains, um, but also um, insights around, for example, how do you make procurement circular, um, because that's an essential ingredient. Um, so there's a lot of knowledge to share. Um, and then uh, we have a geographical angle, and now, okay, we'll speak to that in a moment, but obviously you cannot only do this on a global level, because action is always local, and therefore mobilizing people on the ground in different geographies is essential. So PACE brings all of that together, and then we have a lot of volunteers that put their shoulders behind it, uh, and then we have a, a, a high-intensity cadence of meetings and phone calls to, to get things moving, and we solve problems, and that works pretty well. Um, the knowledge finds its way into reports. Right? The circularity gap report actually says we still have a big job to do, uh, and then the new report around the vision for circular ele electronics um, basically defines the problem, but also defines how you can solve it, either by giving electronics a new life, repurposing, um, a repair loop, or by actually taking it back and recirculating the materials. Uh, this can be done in an economically viable way. Uh, we are convinced of that. Um, and then to switch from the knowledge part to the action part, uh, we said, okay, we need to create around electronics two big initiatives. One uh, for capital equipment. If you know Philips, then you know that we stand for medical equipment, and very often that goes to, in a business-to-business -business relationship to hospitals and so on. Um, and we have rounded up a lot of companies to say, let's take that all of that equipment back. Uh, instead of letting it go to a landfill, we want it back. And uh, there's today already 10 companies, 10 big multinationals who are making this pledge uh, among which um, Mitsubishi, uh, Dell, uh, Cisco, many others. And we all have pledged to 
to reach certain goals, and we publish these goals in, into our annual reports and so on. So, for example, Philips, we will take all medical equipment back uh, by uh, 2020 and all products by 2025. Um, a bigger challenge is to, is, is to consumer electronics. Think about your phones and all your other gear uh, that very often uh, makes it into the landfill. Um, and also, there are many initiatives to close the loop. Uh, today, um, we had a meeting around PACE. There were many intense dialogues around it, how governments and procurement should become circular, but also that there should be standards to make sure that electronics um, is repairable and that we know what valuable materials are inside so to all take it back. So, of course, that is all described in this document, and here's how we activate on that. Um, I think it is going to be very useful to talk about the geographical expansion, because I already mentioned you only get traction when you mobilize people uh, on the local community. And there we have exciting news to give. Now, okay, why don't you take it over? Thank you. Um, good afternoon. Um, this exciting news that France is talking about is actually the launch of the Nigerian uh, e-waste uh, project. Uh, as you may know, that the, now Africa is becoming a bit of a dumping site of those e, um, uh, electronics, so that then how we can really avoid that pro problem. Currently, that the Nigeria uh, received uh, maybe 500,000 tons of electronic waste a year, and it is estimated that 100,000 people are working in informal sector and then are exposed to a huge health risk. So how we could actually that solve this problem? This uh, project we are now launching, or they are now launching, has two components. The one is policy side, that we help this project help them to introduce EPL, Extended uh, Produce um, Responsibility um, Principle, and then also it has an infrastructure side, how to do this better uh, recycling. So with this policy side and the infrastructure side, and we hope that uh, this project will actually that, uh, solve this and uh, the crisis, e-waste crisis in Nigeria, and the uh, and what's more, we hope that it will be actually that then replicated in some part of this in Africa, which have the same problem, which are facing the same pro uh, problem. Um, if I may say one more thing about China, <laughs> that China uh, joined that then, uh, this space that then, uh, last year, and then, uh, um, um, that today um, we are very much then, uh, privileged to have a uh, minister, Xie Junfar, that then uh, the vice chair, chairperson of NDLC, um, uh, um, National uh, Development and Reform Council. And, and then uh, um, apparently we learned that uh, the minister, Xie, is actually the person who coined the word circular economy. And all of those two years that he has been promoting the circular economy as an uh, actually means to realize the much bigger vision of ecological civilization, which is basically meant to, um, to, to catalyze that in a holistic, comprehensive way of their economy and also society. And we got a quite a good briefing from him directly that and how China has been doing and what is his plan to go forward. So that then I think the entire pace and the team is very much benefited from China. And also we hope that then, uh, the pace platform will also help that the kind of uh, ambition uh, to, to, to move forward. So it's uh, from regional, global dimension that maybe the two things I'd like to share with you today. Thank you, Naoko. And uh, Franz, you used this wonderful expression that your uh, volunteers put their shoulders behind it. And indeed, it is heavy lifting. Let me just uh, quote one statistic from the, from the report that I found uh, absolutely astonishing. As a layperson here on the panel, every year approximately 50 million tons of electronic and electrical waste are produced equivalent in weight to all commercial aircraft ever built. I think that's a that's a very concrete example uh, of the of the amount of e-waste uh, we're dealing with, and the report goes on to state that um, if nothing is done, this amount will triple by 2050. Um, as Secretary General, ITU has been very active uh, in that field and is is engaged in this work as well. Um, can you share your perspective as an international organization on the magnitude of the challenge, please? Thank you very much. It's on. It's on. Yes. Okay. Very good. Uh, thank you very much for your in, uh, call for my uh, message. Uh, I'm a secretary general of uh, International Telecommunications Union. Uh, International Telecommunications Union was created in 
Europe, 1865, so that we already had uh, 153 years uh, history. But from the very beginning, IT had worked with our industry, including Philips, uh, to develop uh, new technologies of communication. And with this uh, communication technologies, you, evidently you have to use electronic equipment. So from the very beginning, we, we are just uh, uh, you know, uh, encouraging our society to get uh, new technologies with electronic equipment. So we have not uh, really put this question on the e-waste on our agenda. So when we got uh, this kind of statistics, you just quoted that uh, uh, annually we had about 55 uh, million tons of uh, e-waste. Uh, that uh, was valued around uh, 68 billion US dollars. So this is, is a very big money. And this money, you know, that uh, someone said that uh, in the world, uh, around uh, 120 countries, their GDP is uh, not higher than that one. So that is a uh, very big uh, uh, issue for us. And then another story is, uh, you know, that uh, we already worked on this issue for some sometimes, but uh, still, up to now, only 10% of recycling of this e-waste is uh, done by someone. And this is not enough for sure. And we talked about uh, the climate change, and we talked recently uh, about uh, plastic pollution. And e-waste uh, also causes some environmental issues for us as well. So that is a very big issue. So ITU worked uh, uh, with uh, the equipment. We are very proud that uh, ICT is not a part of uh, Problem, but the ICT is always a part of a solution everywhere. But now we see that the ICT also cause trouble of these uh, the environmental issues and the problems. So we are very serious. We try to work hard with our partners, with our members, with our industries to address this issue. And last year, we invited a few UN agencies together with ITU to sign a memorandum. We try to work together. And those UN agencies, including ITU, United Nations University, ILO, and uh, UNDP, and WEF as well. And I'm very pleased to share with you that just last week we got uh, another member, WHO, to join us to sign this uh, agreement for the U.S. So this is uh, something we just started. And we try to, to, you know, to address this issue uh, very seriously. And when we signed that uh, agreement last March in ITU, at our big meeting of WISIS, I also mentioned that this kind of statistics just show us the e-waste situation on the territory. We are not talking about the e-waste in the sky. In the sky, you have another kind of e-waste as well. That is more serious for us if something happened, you know, that, uh, for example, uh, uh, late last year, we had some problems about uh, shooting down from the sky of uh, uh, satellite. Uh, so that is uh, another issue we will we, we try to address. And I'm very pleased that uh, we uh, already have some first uh, report to be launched today. And uh, that report will give us some, some information about the uh, situation today and uh, what uh, we plan to do. Of course, here, you know, we count on our media friends to help us to uh, raise the awareness of this uh, important issue and to invite uh, everybody, particularly through our NGOs and uh, uh, the others, to, 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 to come together to address this issue. Uh, let me just stop here for a moment. Thank you. Secretary General, thank you for your remarks. Um, Leanne, you are the uh, resident geek on our panel uh, this evening as the CEO of Everledger. Um, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what Everledger, Everledger does, but more importantly, about how technology in general can be an important aspect of dealing with the electronic waste crisis. Please. So I wear the, prou I wear the badge proudly. So yes, my name's Leanne Kemp. I'm the founder and CEO of a technology company called Everledger. And I'm also hold office with the Queensland government as the chief entrepreneur to set policy and help assist in the innovation agenda around fourth industrial revolution technologies. 
My company began in the heart of London in 2015, um, predominantly using the combination of fourth industrial revolution technologies, blockchain, smart contracts, machine vision and robotics to transform a supply chain. Um, and that being the diamond supply chain, to bring transparency across a singular a singular product, but to also think about how this supply chain can be transformed to reuse metals and minerals out of an electronic waste supply chain. And we proudly sit here in front of you today and I read this report and I'm completely excited. So being the resident nerd on the desk, um, it, this report stands as the blueprint. The blueprint for entrepreneurs and innovators around the world that understand singular technologies that can come together to solve for very real challenges. And as we start to understand how circular economy will transform, it will become a chamber within the beating heart of trade. And of course, these technologies will also form the artery system to enable us to move the limbs of industry to really transform the importance around waste. And more importantly, I'm completely excited around electronics because the reality is unless we have a good identity system to be able to identify not only the source of these materials and where they have come from, but also that same identity system that can persist over time, we are now able to create an entirely new system of value, something that is incredibly important to industry, to economies and to even to the future of jobs, works and skills. Thank you, Leon. Um, Franz, you are a, a leading a global company and yet you are a proud Dutchman. So I'm surprised that you uh, kept a secret about the role that the Netherlands will play uh, for PACE. Right. So I have to put you on the spot and please share with the audience right. uh, uh, what is going on. So you've heard us talk about um, the movement that is starting to uh, get success around uh, circular economy. Um, plastics, e-waste, food chains. Um, practices, so it's really exciting. But clearly, um, you then need to put a movement behind it and an organization. So also over the last year, we have been working on fundraising uh, and establish a permanent organization uh, that can run PACE. Um, WRI will be the hosting organization, and the Netherlands has, uh, has um, supported us to become the hosting country. Um, through funding, through uh, other means. Um, and so this is very exciting. PACE will be headquartered in the Netherlands. Um, and from there on, we will expand further. Um, maybe finalizing then with a statistic, um, already over 11 countries uh, have signed up to PACE. Already over 54 companies have signed up to PACE. So all of this is expanding. Uh, and I think this is where leaders take responsibility. And um, where the media can help us is create awareness, but also um, hold everybody to the responsibility that to live in this world and for the next generations, we need to shift from a linear to a circular model. And that's our goal. Thank you. Thank you, Franz. And uh, for the sake of our online audience, the WRI is the World Resources uh, Institute um, uh, that, that Franz uh, mentioned. Um, you mentioned the role of the media. so. Uh, Let's uh, open the floor for, for a question and answer. Uh, if I could see a show of hands um, of those of you who have a question. Yes, we have a lady in the front row, please. The microphone is coming. Uh, hello, panelists. I'm uh, Angela, working for a Chinese online media called Sina. And uh, I was here attending the, the last press conference and I asked one question about how to recycle all the, all, all the wasted batteries out of an electric car because the electric car has been a, 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 a big market here in, in China. But we, we start to consider about what to do with all the used the batteries after, the, you know, after they run out of the life. And it, so I asked a question, but they say that this panel actu actually it's about how to deal with all the waste, you know, the, the electric waste. So you might will come up with a better solution for this. Thank you, panelist. Thank you very much. Um, so don't tell anyone, but these are the, the these are the better experts here in this press conference. No, I'm kidding, of course. But who wants to take a stab at, at answering the question? Um, maybe to give you some time to think uh, about your answer. Uh, one statistic also from the report we're launching today is that only 20% of all this property is recycled. So I think that uh, that goes to show how relevant uh, your question is. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'll, I'll be happy to give it a start, and then you can contribute. Yes, please. Um, let's say first we need to do general recycling and take back, right? But that can never be the end goal. Uh, and as Minister Xi also shared, you know, standards will have to be set. For example, standards about repairability, standards about um, um, reusability uh, of materials, material passports, uh, and those are going to be next steps. Uh, within the, um, the e-waste, um, uh, the, the, the Electronic Waste Alliance um, and the Circular Vision, there is also a battery alliance, right, where battery companies um, start to discuss on how to do this. Um, and one of the, the future uh, solutions can be is that the manufacturers will have to take responsibility for what they design and produce. Right, so, still not the final solution, right, but definitely we are moving. So I, I could probably answer. Um, Everledger is a part of the Global Battery Alliance, and we've been working in particular components of the battery, and particularly uh, in lithium. And we understand how we can do traceability from the source of the mine with lithium, and then also within the battery itself, we can we can take lithium out in terms of its pouch, and then have a reusable component in secondary life. The other parts of the exploration has been around sort of second and third generation use of batteries where it could be used in a mobile car um, but also could be reused stationary uh, for the storage of, of, solar, of solar energy on houses. Um, the experiments that are underway now is how many recyclable loops uh, are safe uh, that, uh, that, that, we can, that we can consider. And then at the end of that third or fourth life, um, how do we then sort of uh, dematerialise the, the, the finished item? If you could wait for the microphone, please. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned about recycling and reuse of the batteries, but how, uh, what, what's the cost for that? Is that expensive? Is that affordable right now? And would that be more expensive than just throw it away? Um, the economics are, are complicated. I think that there are certain governments and certainly our government in Queensland is looking at um, the value construction around the cost of waste versus the taxation and the full cost across the supply chain. So governments are enlivening and they're awakening to the reality of, of, of cost measures and taxation. Um, I think the redesign of the battery at source of manufacturing is critical to enabling um, sort of next generation zero waste policy. But at the moment, there are certain types of components within batteries we certainly are able to extract cost effectively, use and reuse um, over multiple generations of use. But I would like to say that we've solved the problem, but all I can say is we're wholly committed to solving the problem rather than it's been solved. But if your question is around economic viability of circular models, I can say for capital equipment, uh, where Philips is very active, we are convinced that the circular model um, is going to be profitable, um, apart from being the right thing to do. Right? So we can integrate it into our economic model, and if you fundamentally integrate it, it is a very sustainable economic model. And that's also why we are moving fast in the capital equipment side. Thank you very much. Uh, we're already slightly running over time, but maybe we have time for a second question. Um, somebody still hesitating here? No? Yes. Of course. Can I ask for a quite a wide, maybe general question about um, what do you feel, uh, can, the question to Mr. Zhao, um, because the big issue is about Huawei, uh, this company, because you come here, <laughs> would like to hear your view about the issue. Um, yeah. It's not no, uh, I believe also this is, uh, this is going beyond the scope of this report. It's definitely an interesting question, uh, but uh, not, uh, right. not for today. So can I so change another question? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> to, to Mr. Houghton. Um, yeah, for the Brexit, I mean for the uh, e-waste standard, will, will after Brexit, will the standard and, and uh, any relevant regulation will be changed? Thank you. Again, I would say uh, we should not discuss circularity in the context of one particular uh, political issue. Right? We, we, we run a global platform, and regardless of any political situation, we do a call to action that everybody will adopt circularity in their business models. 
uh, and that can be done regardless what happens there. Um, maybe to broaden the, the question, um, uh, I know none of you is from the public sector per se, but what would the role be for the public sector in this? Um, so you're partnering with Nigeria uh, in other regions as well. Um, so w what are they bringing to the table for this? I think I'm from public sector. Actually, the uh, GEF is not the NGO. It's actually we were owned by 183 member countries. So we were actually an intergovernmental institution. And one of the things that I'm uh, very proud of and I think is important is in order for us to move on to this circular economy, we need this PPP and a private-public partnership because that, that the role of the government is actually that they create this regulation and so that the circular economy becomes actually a profitable that the right now that in many ways that the, the, the lack of regulation, lack of policy, actually that kind of hampering that the circular economy moving forward. So I think that the, today we discuss a lot about the, uh, what are the obstacles, how we can move forward. Many people actually mention that the, if we can have a, a more standardized regulation, that the information, the policy, which creates that the circular economy much more profitable, that would be definitely one way to go. So to me, this uh, the circular economy is the answer. It's a question uh, to, to how to make this current economic uh, the linear to more circular. The role of the government is absolutely important. Without this PPP, private-public partnership, we can't really go deeper. So that I think that, uh, um, that there is a huge um, kind of opportunity and a huge responsibility of the public sector, public policy too. And I, and I can speak on behalf of my public office, certainly under the Minister of Innovation, we've ready this year in Queensland a number of, uh, a, a, a number of investments, both in hard infrastructure, um, in startups and scale-ups with purpose-led innovation around circular economy, uh, with a laboratory to ensure that we can test and trial and then create um, sandbox environments for corporates, for governments and for NGOs to all participate across an entire supply chain within our state. So I think it's our incumbent responsibility to create, you know, create an environment and have, and have that investment up front. Yeah, from ITU side, you know, that we uh, try to encourage uh, other uh, ecosystems representatives to join us. Uh, of course, uh, you know, we talked about uh, recycling of 10%, uh, not 20%. Our target next is 30%. Uh, and for those who could be recycled, you know, people will do that job. For example, you know, people talked about uh, in one ton of U.S., you have uh, uh, gold 10 times more than one ton of uh, mines. <laughs> you know, that, uh, you know, people look for gold, they will come to this uh, part of work to recycling this equipment. But of course, uh, that uh, question earlier raised that uh, battery contamination, contamination of the environment, that is uh, quite uh, serious. And uh, that one, you, you might be able to use, uh, reuse some batteries, but then in the end, still, uh, those things cannot be used. Those uh, chemical uh, elements uh, could uh, you know, go to the uh, environment to damage our, our, our environment. So that uh, is uh, something we really have to uh, engage everybody in. Uh, of course, the real work will be done by industry, but the government uh, has uh, obligations to create a good uh, environment policies to encourage our industries and could uh, also uh, provide some financial support, like, uh, mm -hmm. like you said, that uh, there's uh, political uh, obligations to do this job. If we look at this, uh, economic uh, uh, recycling that uh, may not be that worthwhile, <laughs> it cannot be sustainable. But uh, anyhow, this... Very, very concretely, yeah. uh, governments should start procuring for themselves in a circular way. The government procurement bill is enormous and they need, they need to make that move. Secondly, we need policies from governments uh, and then some legislation. If I give you the example, how many countries are now uh, starting to uh, prohibit single-use plastics Right, for example, in plastic shopping bags, uh, which all end up in the landfill or in the, in the ocean. Very concrete example. So um, as a businessman, I always say, make it simple. Uh, these things can be done tomorrow. Uh, there's no reason to wait. Uh, so policies, procurement can start right away. Uh, we, uh, we also heard from some government officials, like, uh, you know, mobile phone set. You know, that uh, every six months you change. <laughs> you know, you have a lot of uh, second-hand uh, mobile phones uh, wasted and that uh, ca cannot we u reuse these mobile phones? But the government uh, already put this uh, on their agenda to see how can we 
uh, encourage people to use this uh, electronic uh, uh, terminal equipment. Uh, and we, uh, ITU, worked with uh, uh, the other agencies like uh, UNEP. And, uh, you know, they are very, very, very competent in the environment uh, aspect. And then we worked with, now we invited WHO to join us because from their side, you know, for the human health, you know, that they could see the damage caused by the e-west, you know, that. And, uh, you know, all this uh, would help us to, to have a very good uh, uh, understanding of these kind of uh, problems where we could uh, find ways to, to solve, to address those issues. Thank you very much. And mindful of the time, it's uh, my uh, sad duty now to close the press conference. Um, go to the website, read the report. It's definitely not a waste of your time. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for watching. And a special thank you to all my panelists tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you.